everybody. It's me, Dad, Dirty Pat Walsh, in the mad end of town. It's Friday morning. I don't feel like fucking around with the camera tricks. So I'm just going to crassly take a fucking big fat pinch of snuff right in front of your fucking face. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's how you fucking do it. That's what we got today. This stuff is good, man. It's good. I like the... I like their class... I think I like their classic mint better. A little bit. But this is almost exactly the same. So... And the classic mint is probably my favorite dip of all time. But... Yeah, this is fucking bomb. I have all these cans that I have. I have, and I still have. Mo I still have most of this can left. Like, uh, talk more than so I still have that much. That much left for this can. This is the can I've dipped on the most. So I'm doing. I'm doing all right. Is that I don't do it all that much. You know. I uh. Yeah, I made a bunch of videos. I made a bunch of vlogs yesterday, but I was having I was having uh, uh, I was having issues, and I didn't I just didn't think I I didn't feel like I should post them. Uh, nothing I I just didn't feel it. <sighs> I didn't feel like doing this. I didn't feel like doing this thing yesterday. So that's why I didn't do it yesterday. But, uh, whatever. I made a couple of musics for you yesterday. Um, whoa! Right into the Tower of Fucking Pills. This is tripod. I love this tripod, but it's just trying to, trying to work it so it's good. There you go. But, um, and yeah. Okay, so Thursday, uh, the 15th of February, uh, Hurricane Charlie will be playing a show at Sadler House. Uh, Reese Kleiman, Kleiman Hogg, uh, uh, Reese, if you're watching, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Um, but Reese will be uh, kind of organizing it. Um, he's got something going on first that I don't remember. I think it starts at eight. Um, Jill and I are on. I think eight thirty to nine. It's either eight thirty to nine or nine to nine thirty. I think it's. I'm pretty sure it's eight thirty to nine. Which is great because it's we're gonna be playing mostly new material, and uh, as far as I know, uh, and uh, we're gonna be doing a Billy Joel song with my buddy Nathan on vocals and Reese playing guitar because I can't play that fucking good good music because Billy Joel's music. So I'm going to do the harmonica part. There's a harmonica part. Hey! I can always do the harmonica part. That's easy, you know. But you playing guitar? I don't know. The thing I like about this fucking spittoon that Hillary sent me I don't know if you can hear it, but when I when I got it right, when I like when I, you know, when I clean it all out, I clean it all out every time I use it, and wash it with soap and soap and soda, keep it clean, you know, and uh, but it gets that fucking if you hit it in the right spot, it gets that ping sound, that the old cowboy ping sound, you know, it's kind of cool. Reminds me of being. Reminds me of Saturday morning cartoons, you know. But uh, anyhow, uh, so yeah, so after we play, uh, where we're gonna play for about a half hour, uh, and then Reese is gonna do a thing where he takes like a whole bunch of local songwriters and uh. 
makes a, makes a, gets them all to sing one song they haven't recorded and then turns that into like a live compilation album of new songs by local artists. So that's really cool. I'm probably going to do something for that. Um, yeah. I was at, I was up at Trent Radio uh, the other day, and uh, talking to talking to Rochelle, the woman who does Food Not Bombs. I noticed that video has like more hits than any other video on on this page, by far. Like, it's incredible. Uh, how many people that uh, reached out to? That's really good. But Rochelle and I, we were talking about a lot of things. We have, we have like, she, we're both really into tarot. We're both uh, in a real punk, in a punk rock and stuff like that. So she's cool to talk to at the station. And so I asked her how she got into tarot. And she told me her story. I'll leave that for another video. A very interesting story. One of the more interesting stories I've I've heard of people who are into that sort of thing. And she asked me if I uh, had ever told my story. Or, well, she asked me what my story was with it. And then she asked me if I'd ever told it. And I said, I didn't remember. So I'm going to tell it. But it's very cool. I'll give the brief condensed version. I was 11 years old, okay? It was the fun fair at my grade 7 school. All right? Punk rock was all the all the rage, like becoming all the rage, and we were just learning about it. We were I was I was eleven, I was my son's age. Um, you know, punk rock was all the rage, and uh, all with the high school kids, and it was kind of seeping down because they're everybody's older brother, not mine, but a lot of kids had older brothers in high school and older sisters, and it was sinking down into the, into the grade school it's a punk rock thing, right? So. We had a school fun fair, so uh, one of the, and the school fun fairs were very different back in my day. Okay, like, uh, okay, I'll tell you the second part first because I'm talking about that. But uh, anyway, I went. So one of the things that happened is they had hired this crazy punk rock band to play this grade grade school fair or fun fair. This band called the Uncalled For from the local high school uh, OTHS, one of the schools. And, uh, you know, the, from what I remember, they just did, like, a, a lot of Sex Pistols and Clash and Damn covers and, like, you know, covers of, like, the, the, the punk rock hits of the day. And uh, maybe they did some of their own stuff, too. I don't, they were, but they were great. When I think about all the punk rock bands I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen a lot of fucking punk rock bands in my life. Hundreds of punk rock bands in my life. I still think they're one of the best. Because, Jesus, I saw them, it was like 1981. When I saw, it was all so new. Like, it was back when things were, punk rock was dangerous back then, man. Like, it was way different, you know. But I knew, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I, this is my life. I have to be a part of this. I gotta be, I gotta be. I gotta be in the mix. I gotta be. I gotta be down with this. So I, I was from that day on, and now I'm a 47 year old man on welfare. So it obviously took me far, but that's okay. Uh, I'm a, I'm a very small time YouTuber. I got that going on. Um. But yeah. So anyway, the first part of the story is uh, just minutes before that happened. I went to uh, no the school rummage sale. Okay, like it was so different than a rummage sale you'd see at a school nowadays, you know, or a, a, even a book sale or anything. You you could probably bought a switchblade if this for the fucking rummage sale. Like there was everything, you know, all kinds of shit. And uh, I bought a, my first deck of Rider weight tarot cards for twenty five cents at the rummage sale. And uh, was immediately just entranced with them. Like, I just, I before I went and saw this punk bands play, I sat and looked at them for, like, half an hour. I just was amazed by them. I thought they were so cool. 
And uh, so after I saw this band play, my life was changed. My whole world was rocked that day because I found these two things that I knew were going to stick with me my whole life. And, uh, you know, and it's funny, like, I've had three moments like that, kind of, with things. Like harmonica, the first time I picked up a harmonica ever. I knew it was going to be a major influence in my life and something that I did for a long time. And it's something that I'm deeply immersed in today. Uh, tarot, which is something that I don't, I'm not religious at all. I'm not, you know, I don't, I'm not metaphysical at all. But tarot cards work for me for some reason, for when I need their guidance or need some spirituality in my life or something, you know. Um, and punk rock, you know, definitely made me who I am today, you know, like, uh, not so much, uh, financially or whatever, but, uh, that's for other reasons, but, um, it shaped my worldview, that's for sure. And it shaped my musical view and it shaped a lot of my views on art and everything. So it was a very huge day for me. And I wish I remembered the date, but uh, I could probably figure it out. But uh, yeah, it was a fucking huge day for me. I was 11 years old, you know. And uh, I don't know if that happened when I first picked up a guitar. Like, I know I wanted to play guitar. And I knew I, I'm still not a very good guitar player, you know. But harmonica really was an epiphany for me. Tarot, definitely an epiphany. And seeing my first punk rock band just knocked me off my rock my world totally so yeah so there i told that story for rochelle mm -hmm. it's making this video come to a, an end quick i didn't think i really had much to say i haven't felt like i've had much to say for the last couple of days which is probably a good thing but whatever um, I'm going to try to get some music out of my system. I'm having a hard time. I'm trying to focus on doing these, some, some projects right now. I'm having a hard time focusing on them because I, I'm, I'm, my mind is elsewhere in music and I have to get some things out of my system. So I'm probably going to make a bunch of videos today that maybe one or two people will watch. So maybe if we can get at least one of the videos I make up today up to up to three likes, then uh, it'll be a success, <laughs> I guess. Whatever. No, it doesn't matter. Watch it or don't. I don't fucking care. It's all good. Okay. I'm going to be uh, around. So I'll see you in the meth of town with me, Chef Dirty P. Be well.